Agatha, the host of a crime channel, greets her audience in her new podcast, Unsolved Crimes. Mysteries surround us everywhere, and sometimes the answers are so incredible that it raises the question, maybe it's better not to know the truth at all? The broadcast was interrupted by a doorbell. A courier brought a letter for Agatha in a golden envelope. Los Cabos, Mexico. Agatha is preparing to meet her half-sister, whom she hasn't seen in five years. This is their chance to bond. Agatha's ex-husband, Carlos, was also invited. It seems they aren't the only guests. The question is, why did Olivia invite them all? While Carlos received a call from his clinic, Agatha entered the house. Later, she accidentally overheard part of a conversation between Doña Cristina and Carlos, who were clearly concerned about something. Then Agatha met Feig, who turned out to be a subscriber of her channel. Like everyone else, he has no idea why Olivia gathered them. Carrie, Olivia's ex-boyfriend and actor, was loudly arguing with someone on the phone. Agatha hadn't seen him in many years. Sonia and her boyfriend Naram were waiting outside, on the beach. Doña Cristina read aloud a message from Olivia, who welcomed everyone to her villa. Her invitation remains a mystery. Each guest will be assigned a specific room. Doña Cristina said that Gustav will show everyone to their rooms. This villa is named after Elisa, who perished five years ago. Most of those present last saw Olivia at the funeral. Agatha asked Doña Cristina to show her where Elisa was buried. Cristina led her to an urn with ashes near the shore. Agatha called her assistant Iris and shared that everything happening seemed strange. Why did Olivia gather them all here? It is Cristina's duty to ensure the guest's needs are met. She is assisted by a nearly blind butler named Gustav. The uncertainty keeps Agatha restless. But everyone in the house feels the same way. Later, the guests were taken on a yacht trip. Finally Olivia greeted everyone in person, raising a glass to their health. Each of those present played an important role in both the bad and good moments of her life. At dinner, Olivia was ready to reveal the reason for the invitations. She had prepared a surprise for everyone, after which perhaps some might not make it back to shore. At first the guests took it as a joke, but soon it became clear that Olivia was serious. She stated that everyone on this yacht has a reason to hate the person next to them. For instance, Sonia hates Olivia, who once stole her boyfriend Carlos. Naram who loves Sonia deeply, would surely support her decision to get rid of Olivia. Carrie, Olivia's former love, owes Carlos a large sum of money. If Carlos were gone, it would solve all of Carrie's problems. Feig once worked in one of Carlos' clinics. And Olivia knows exactly why Feig quit. Carlos firmly stated that this matter concerns only him and Feig. Olivia retorted by telling Carlos that money has always mattered more to him than medicine, love, or even his daughter. Carlos clearly didn't like this conversation, just like everyone else. Olivia told the guests that tonight they would surely ask someone for forgiveness and say goodbye to someone forever. Everyone wants to believe this is a prank. Agatha decided to talk to her sister in private. They had drifted apart after Elisa's demise. The women began reminiscing about the past, Agatha had always dreamed of having an older sister, and one day it happened. They became each other's family. Agatha wished she could have been there for Olivia after Elisa was gone, but each of them was going through grief in their own way. Then Agatha accidentally overheard a conversation between Sonia and Carlos. The girl was reminding her ex-boyfriend of his promise. The sound of an incoming message on the phone revealed Agatha's presence. That night, she and the others were awakened by Carrie's screams for help. Olivia was lying on the lower deck, showing no signs of life. She had either fallen or been pushed. Agatha couldn't calm down. They were in the middle of the ocean, which meant they couldn't even call the police. Morning came. The yacht reached the shore. Forensic experts took the body away. No one could believe that Olivia was gone. Captain Haida Magayan expressed his condolences to Agatha and asked if there was a phone at the villa because there was no cell signal here. Doña Cristina explained that the cell tower had exploded during the night. The captain stated that since Olivia perished in the ocean on the border of two territories, it was unclear which country's police would conduct the investigation. Carlos urgently needed to go to the clinic, but the captain would not allow anyone to leave the villa until further decisions were made. Everyone is wondering what happened to Olivia. No one wants to stay at the villa, but the captain was adamant. Carlos is more nervous than anyone. Agatha told the lieutenant that the day before, Olivia had warned them that someone wouldn't return to shore. The lieutenant recognized Agatha's voice, realizing that she was the host of a crime channel. Five years ago Olivia and Carlos lost their daughter. Olivia fell into a deep depression. Carlos tried to help his wife, but to no avail. Later, he met another woman in Mexico and filed for divorce. A conflict arose between Carlos and Agatha. Agatha hadn't spoken to the sister for several years, and Carlos believed that now she was only interested in her will. A scream interrupted everyone, someone had shot at Naram but missed. 
The guy didn't see who it was. The smell of gunpowder came from a closet where Agatha found a hidden door. Apparently the shooter escaped through there. Carlos mentioned that there were many hidden doors in the house. In the secret corridor there was a second door that was jammed, but the lieutenant managed to open it. It led them to a room. Agatha noticed a hatch. But where did it lead? Realizing that Agatha was very observant, the lieutenant suggested they work together. If he solved this crime first, he would get a promotion to inspector. Agatha agreed. For her, the most important thing was to find out what happened to Olivia. The lieutenant urged everyone to cooperate. The sooner they figured out what happened, the sooner each of them could leave. Following Agatha's advice, the lieutenant first questioned Gustav. The most inconspicuous person might know the most. Agatha assisted the lieutenant, taking notes on all the conversations. On the night of Olivia's demise, Gustav was at home and went to bed early. He was woken up by the explosion of the cell tower. It could have been a short circuit. Carlos hired Gustav five years ago. Agatha found it strange that on the day the guests arrived, Gustav was swapping the flowers outside. Gustav explained that it was at the mistress's request. After questioning the first witness, Agatha told the lieutenant that she needed to step out. Against his boss's orders, the lieutenant allowed her to go. From a landline, Agatha called Iris and told her everything. Now Agatha needed Iris to write down the names of everyone invited to the villa, just in case. There was no doubt that Olivia had gathered them here for a reason. Meanwhile, the guests were forced to just wait. Each of them had matters to attend to, but they were not allowed to leave the villa. The lieutenant wanted to know where each of them was when the shot was fired. It seemed that everyone had an alibi. Judging by the fact that the shooter missed, he or she was not a professional. Carlos was convinced that they were all in danger here, but the lieutenant reminded that no one would leave until the captain returned. Feig accidentally dropped his bag, spilling a lot of different medications. Christina complained of chronic pain in her leg, and Carlos and Feig escorted the woman to her room. Time passed agonizingly slowly. Agatha suggested that the shooter intentionally missed. Maybe this was part of Olivia's game. Agatha remembered that on the day of their arrival, the flowers in front of the house were replaced with purple ones, a color symbolizing love, justice and forgiveness. Now they needed to piece everything together. Kerry mentioned that last night on the yacht, he couldn't sleep, so he was rehearsing a script for a movie. The lieutenant, along with Agatha, interrogated the other guests. They were particularly interested in what Carlos had discussed with Sonia on the yacht the previous day. Carlos explained that Sonia had asked him to finance her perfume line, which she had been trying to sell for years. Sonia confirmed this. Naram had no idea why Olivia invited him since they had never even met. Agatha tried to understand the connection between all the guests. When asked about his relationship with Sonia, Naram said it was love at first sight. That evening, Olivia was arguing with someone on the lower deck, but no one saw with whom. Carrie wanted to talk to Agatha alone, without the lieutenant and the recorder. He also believed that Olivia had gathered them for a specific reason. Agatha thought that Carrie's acting skills might help them solve this case. Naram couldn't understand why he had to be here since he wasn't connected to Olivia's family. Agatha went to her room to gather her thoughts. When she looked out the window, something on the yacht caught her attention. Agatha went to the yacht and found Feig rummaging through Olivia's medicine cabinet. Feig had to confess to Agatha that Olivia was sick but didn't want anyone to know. Olivia also had birth certificates for several children. Agatha and Feig decided not to tell the lieutenant about this. Later, Agatha called Iris, who had managed to uncover something. Gustav had lost an eye after a construction accident, and Carlos's charity fund had offered him a corneal transplant. Also Agatha asked Iris to note down the names of those children. Then Agatha's attention was drawn to a magazine. On the cover were Governor Thomas Guzman and his wife Clara, who were unable to have children. Workers were repairing the cell tower. Iris discovered that the governor and his wife had planned to adopt a child, and Carlos was somehow involved. The cell tower was repaired, so the signal was restored. Agatha had already conducted her own investigation and found out that Elisa was actually the daughter of a woman named Renata Gudoy. After losing her daughter, the woman fell into depression and voluntarily passed away. Renata had a brother, Ramiro Gudoy. When Agatha showed a photo, everyone recognized Narm in it. He had once been a waiter. Olivia had left other clues in her cabin. For example Elisa's death certificate, which was somehow issued seven years before her actual demise. Five years ago Elisa's photos were everywhere, and Naram, or rather Renato recognized his niece. Apparently Renato wanted to uncover the truth and find out how Olivia and Carlos had adopted his niece, who supposedly had perished at birth. Renato decided to get to Olivia through Sonia. He assumed a false identity and pretended to be a yoga instructor from India. Sonia countered, saying that Renato had revealed his plan to her from the beginning, and they had decided to act together. 
In the end it became clear that Olivia initially believed Elisa was an orphan. She promised to find out the truth, and that was the reason Sonia and Renato were here. Agatha was skilled at noticing all the details and knew when someone was trying to lie to her. She could easily become a professional detective. Carrie mentioned that yesterday he had a chat with Christina. When Carrie complained of dizziness, Christina kindly offered him to lie down in her room. In reality Carrie was only pretending to be dizzy. In Christina's room, he found her business card. The woman turned out to be a social worker. She was the one who was present at Elisa's birth. Suddenly Christina appeared with a gun, but Agatha had wisely unloaded all the weapons in the house earlier that morning when she noticed the smell of gunpowder on the woman. Christina was a social worker dealing with single mothers. She and Carlos, the owner of the largest clinic network, were in cahoots, providing wealthy childless couples with children. Initially Olivia didn't know that her adopted daughter was not actually an orphan. The captain arrived, shocked by the turn of events. The lieutenant told his chief that it was Agatha who solved the case. Agatha presented her version of events. Olivia had deliberately left them many clues. Christina denied everything, but Agatha had irrefutable evidence. She had wisely placed a pen with a voice recorder in one of the rooms and a clock with a hidden camera in the hall. Now Agatha had plenty of material for her new podcast. The recordings indeed confirmed the version of events that Agatha proposed. It was Christina who shot at Ramiro but missed. Christina fell ill, and Carlos volunteered to take the woman to her room. Carlos and Christina were in criminal collusion, but were they involved in Olivia's demise? In Agatha's opinion, they were not. In fact Olivia voluntarily passed away because she was terminally ill. Feed confirmed that Olivia had cancer. Apparently she found out about her ex-husband's illegal activities and wanted to expose him. Olivia deliberately orchestrated the incident at the jurisdictional border of two territories so that Carlos couldn't hand over a baby to Clara Guzman. Gustav helped Olivia with the cell tower explosion because Carlos hadn't kept his promise and didn't pay for his corneal transplant. Olivia on the other hand did. Gustav was arrested for property damage. Taking advantage of everyone's distraction, Carlos and Christina were about to escape on the yacht. As it turned out, Olivia had anticipated this too and planted explosives on the yacht. After pressing the button, the engine room exploded. Carlos immediately jumped overboard. Thus, this complicated case was solved. Soon Olivia's funeral took place. All her loved ones said their goodbyes. Nearby rested the ashes of Renata and Elisa. Iris arrived, having managed to obtain the medical examiner's report. A high dose of morphine was found in Olivia's body. Apparently Feig had assisted her. Feig confessed that many years ago, a woman passed away during surgery because of him. Carlos didn't want a scandal in his clinic and covered up the incident. All this time Feig had been seeking forgiveness. When Olivia told him about Carlos's dark deeds, Feig thought this was his chance. Agatha decided not to turn Feig over to the police because he acted out of compassion. In the final scene, we see Agatha and Iris preparing for a new podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.